Good morning. So I was recording and it just completely cut off, which somebody said, I love the way you edit your videos. I don't edit them, but I guess Spirit's like, nope, let's try that again. <laughs> and it started off with me waking up to hearing Ozzy, Mama, I'm coming home. And then my daughter giving me a hug a little bit later and saying Happy Mother's Day and me going, oh, it's Mother's Day. So it kind of all came together, you know. And it made me realize being on the precipice of change, that that um, standing, I was listening to Imagine Dragons the other day, standing on the edge face up because you're a natural. And I think a lot of us forget that's already within us, you know. I have a friend that I've been talking to about, um, they're going through some stuff. And... I had to keep telling them you're you're looking outside of yourself for what's inside of you and it's hard because they've made a huge change in their life and they're being brave and courageous you know but it, it boils down to of course you're full of fear when you're in a new state a new place you're trying to rebuild your life you're trying to have a strong foundation you don't know anybody you don't know who to trust hey that's kind of the world we live in right <laughs> when when you're trying to build something for yourself it's really hard to let other people come into that space especially if you're doing okay on your own and the hard part is though blocking those that should be in to help you that aren't going to take over your project they're not going to take over your life they're just there to help you not even to give you unsolicited advice but maybe to support you emotionally be there for you physically and mentally and i'm talking in that hugs and love and that bond that we as humans want that we we need that validation of course we don't want to be involved in anything if there's a lack of security and it's we were talking about that too i I was explaining I stay single because I haven't been with somebody that brings that sense of security to the table. That person, not that I want to fall back on, but that person that I can count on. You know, that when I'm having a bad day, they're like, oh, I see it. I don't have to say anything. And I, that happens over time. We all know that. But when it comes down to it, you don't have to tell somebody's wrong. Something is wrong. You don't have to even talk about what's going on inside the turmoil. You know, my friend, my mom told me about an old friend that I had that had finally said, I'm done with life and she's younger than I am. And she said, I didn't want to tell you sooner because I didn't want to upset you. And I said, well, it just appears she had some demons that she couldn't conquer. And I, I look at life very differently. This has been pointed out to me quite frequently by people that I've been around and I speak to. They're like, you, you think differently, you act differently, you live outside of a box, basically. But that's also being able to come to the reality that this is life, you know, that we all know we come to live. And I just saw a, a trailer for, I don't know what movie it was, but um, I don't remember if the guy or the girl said it, but we've done so much. We had the courage to face death. And then he or she said, and we had the courage to live too. And I was like, that was kind of chilling in a moment because it does take courage to face death, to look at that and go, could it be worth the chance? Could something amazing come out of that? Because if we're too afraid to tempt the fates, let's say, can I alter the path I'm on? Because it doesn't just happen. It's not just like, I'm walking, life's great, okay. Now, oh, there's a new path, it's got flowers, I like that one. That's not how life works. But every choice that we make opens and closes doors and we're redirected and navigated and you can find yourself in the same spot you were in 10 years ago thinking that you've made all these changes. But all it takes is one choice in a day in a moment split seconds have changed people's lives forever we're here to wake up wake up wake up wake up it's the first of the month <laughs> sorry came in my head but 
Or also, shit, there goes another one, on a crazy train. Listen to Ozzy. <laughs> You're going to find yourself going, how did I get here? What's, what's going on? And the thing is, most people feel victimized. They feel like life is happening to them, not for them. If you can switch that way of thinking and go, huh, that wasn't meant for me. And that's the thing about hindsight being 2020, right? You can look back over time and go, wow, I'm glad that didn't work out. But if we can learn to do that in the instant and be grateful and understand that was our protection, that was our guidance, that was something, a higher power that stepped in and said, that is not going to end up well. I see further than you do. I know that person's heart more than you do. And we have to learn to respect the changes. It's funny. While remodeling is going on at work, I'm talking about the changes. Because that situation is creating sheer chaos. And I'm having to calm people down because nobody's comfortable with change, especially friends that I have at work. I have a friend that he was just like, I'm not okay with this. And we have to be. We have to learn to accept that which we cannot control and flow through that which we're going through. Because the more that we grab, and I know this from experience, the more that we try to make it stay, the more that we try to make it work, it is going to destroy us piece by piece by piece. Till we get to the point where we don't know ourselves. We lose so much trying to hang on to something we should not have. And that's hard because when you're letting something go, you do it with a loving and willing heart. If it's ripped away from you, that's where the, turn, the turmoil, the pain, all of these feelings that just are constricting, that's where they come in at. And I've had things ripped away from me multiple times. And I never saw it adding up to the point till it had to be taken away. I could see slightly. I thought they were pink flags, not red flags. <laughs> I could see myself crying. I could see myself getting drained. I could see myself in moments that I was like, what am I doing? But somehow I didn't have that courage inside of me to go, this isn't working for me. And honestly, the last time that happened, where it was about to be ripped away, I made the choice. I cut ties. I changed my phone number. I was contacted through email, and I'm thinking, this is so old school. <laughs> I ignored it. Because it gets to a point when you're shown something is not for you. And I mean, you are shown in the sense that you're losing money. Your life is miserable. You're arguing with people all the time. There's nothing but negativity around you because that is the energy that you're in. When you're in that situation, ask yourself, what is the constant that is affecting my life? Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a thing? Is it a career? Is it a mindset? What is it? Because when you can start pinpointing, you can find what it is that is creating static in your world, that's when you can turn around and go, oh, okay, let me fine tune this. Let me adjust the rabbit ears. Hey, go get the foil. <laughs> Nobody wants to stand here and hold these all day. Older people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, we have to just learn to look at our own lives. Because right now, so many people are reflecting outwardly. And they're looking at what's going on and other people are projecting and we're all absorbing. And one day you go and you're feeling great. And then you meet somebody that's like, oh. you meet Scrooge and you're just like, why do I feel this way now? Why do I feel humbuggish? Why do I feel like I want to fight somebody? I didn't feel like that. Then you learn to go across the street to avoid that person. <laughs> At least when you see the same look on their face. Because this right here is what tells us who is approachable, who is not. There's a lot of people that wear that, that they don't want to be talked to. 
And it's funny, some of those people are the ones that when I do talk to them, they start smiling and joking. And they become some of the coolest people I've known. But they don't want to be bothered. They're, they're at work for a reason. We're all at work for a reason, and it's to feed our families, put roofs over our head, take care of ourselves, not have to rely on a system that could fail us at any time. So when it comes down to it, sometimes those people are just, they've experienced life so much, and a lot of them at such an early age, that they don't want to open up. They don't want to interact. They don't want to hear people complain. The other day I was at the point where I was just like, no more. And I know I looked the other day at, when was the last time I made a video? And it's been a minute. <laughs> I've been having too much company at my house and extra days off of work and going swimming and living life. And it just, time goes by. You know, they say time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> and it really does. Because I didn't realize I hadn't even been coming here going, you're amazing. Life is going to work out for you if you believe in it. I was too busy telling myself, oh, I've needed this break for so long. And we all need that. We all need that notion that we can oh, just breathe. I even went on an adventure to go pick wildflowers and walk in the woods and just get back to nature. I think we forget. Like when we think, where can we go? Because my friend said, let's go on an adventure. You always have adventures. I was like, well, I don't know what to do. And then I just came up with the idea of doing that. And it's funny because if anyone else, if I were to ask them, you want to do something? I mean, we can go to the bar. We can go shoot pool. We can go do the worldly things. But we forget about the world in which we put our feet upon. And maybe because we're always shooed wearing stuff on our feet, blocking the ground from empowering us. Because we have to be able to keep that steady flow, keep it going, sit in the sunlight, absorb those nutrients, let it affect your cells. Because yes, the, the sun does change your genetic structure. Someone told me that the other day. And I was like, huh, that's probably how I've tapped so far in to my ancestral lineage because I love being outside. I love what Mother Nature has to offer in re regard to um, entertainment. It's the simple things in life that everyone forgets about. The sunsets, the sunrises, the smell when the breeze blows by and there's a magnolia tree right outside. Certain things that noises you hear. I remember when I lived in Arkansas, the wind would blow and there was trees and it sounded like the ocean above my head. And that was, I would sit outside for hours, especially on a stormy night, because that's where life is at. Someone asked me, did you see the auroras? It was like two nights ago and I was like, no, here, are you serious? What? I've been wanting to see those for decades. Shoot, I'm waiting for my daughter to grow up so I can plan a backpacking trip to go up and see the lights. I, I want to explore. And it's funny because a lot of people are afraid of that. Like the exploration is going to make us lose ourselves. And it's funny, you have to lose yourself to find yourself. I don't remember who said that. Wookie foot sat saying... <laughs> But we do. We have to get out of here. Allow this to flow but not constrict. And use this. It's like when I was listening to Mr. Crowley by Ozzy. He was speaking in almost rhymes and riddles. And it reminded me of Jesus. There's parables. There's lessons. But only those that use discernment. And don't look exactly at the words to respond, but listen with an open mind. When you listen in that manner, it's like, oh, you were giving me golden information. You were helping me. But 
that's the thing we have to allow that help and that goes back to the very beginning of this how most of us didn't want to listen to our parents we thought they were strict we thought they were lame we thought they were uneducated we thought life's different you have no clue when in reality it's exactly the same we're still standing talking walking breathing working not much has changed other than the mentality of people what people are capable of and that's especially where we need to learn know what you're messing with know what you're trying to pursue or tear down because in the end you never know who you're standing next to i was at a gas station a couple weeks ago and there was this man there and um i was getting my stuff i grabbed my friend's stuff and there was this ice cream sitting there i was like go ahead and put his on there too and he was like no i already got it i said oh he said no i already paid for it and i said oh okay i was just making sure you got your ice cream and he said i really appreciate that and he said that was really nice of you to offer and i said well i've always taught my kids you never know who you're standing next to you treat everybody as if they're royal royalty you never know if you're standing next to Jesus, right? You never know based off of how somebody carries themselves, how they dress, what they drive, where they live, what you think they have. You don't know who you're talking to. Because some of the most mild, I don't know how to, some of the quietest people can be some of the funniest outgoing individuals when they're not in certain environments because like we've talked about wearing hats and masks and having to charade in the world we live in it can be exhausting so at some point take it all off show the world what you are and if you want to be quiet just be quiet at least in certain places i had a co-worker tell me yesterday and i walked over what what's up you know, you're really pretty when you smile. Sometimes we don't always want to smile. And like I told him, sometimes we go through things and we just want to keep that smile to ourselves. And he goes, that's what I'm talking about, that smile. And this older man doesn't realize, that's why I can't stand him. I love everybody, but I can't stand you in my energy at certain times because there's certain boundaries you don't cross. There's certain things you don't say to people because it's rude. You don't tell them to put on a happy face for the world when they themselves are feeling like they're dying inside. That's not fair. Don't continue to be the jester for people around you just so that they feel better. And I've had to learn that. I've had to learn that when I put on that smile, it lights people's worlds up. But I've also had to learn some of those worlds, and you can see it in their eyes. It doesn't matter how much light you shine on them. They're going to absorb it, use it incorrectly, and go around and spread more animosity, hatred, and the feeling of failure in life. They're going to go beat people down. I had to learn about energy vampires. I had to experience them firsthand. It was a very draining situation, and there's no pun intended in that. When you can be energetic enough that you can run, do cartwheels, live your life, be happy, smile, even through the hard times, and then you meet somebody that just negative, 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 negative. That person will keep sending it your way and it's almost as if they're giving you theirs and taking yours away and you can't keep that in your life because eventually they're going to drain you till they have no way to suck the life out of you anymore and they've gone off and shared your energy with everybody else do you know how quickly you can wear yourself out feeding into somebody that is undeserving yeah we're not here to judge but we are here to protect ourselves learn and grow so on that note, that was a very long-winded conversation. And if you made it this far, happy Mother's Day. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day with their family, if that's who you're spending it with. 
Peace, love, and light. Bye.